Salvation only in point only. It is not necessary to mention all these things. Now, after Noakot was conquered by Krishna and Saha, after the conquest of Noakot, the Chogishi states, especially Kaski and Lomjum, tried to make an invasion on in order to stop the military activities of Krishna and Saha. Immediately after, Noakot had been conquered. But this time, Krishna and Saha held a negotiating talk with Lobjung and Kaski, and the problem was solved. There was no problem. Kaski and Lobjung tried to invade Gorkha uh, uh, after Nuakot was conquered by him, but the problem was solved after negotiation. This is the question. Then, After Prasunansa conquered the surrounding areas of the Kantipur, in the east and the west, when surrounding areas were conquered by him, then once again, the four Chobishi states, see, it is a very big step taken by the Chobishi states, Kaski, Lomjuk, Parvat, and Tano, they formed an alliance against him. And this time, the negotiation did not work. And the alliance of these three, the alliance of these four Chobishi states, or the joint army of these four Chobishi states, advanced towards, there is a place which was in northwest of Gorkha, about 10 miles northwest of Gorkha, and that place is known as Shiranjo. And in Shirancho, there was a battle between Gorkha and the joint force of these four provinces. And in this battle, the Chobishi states were defeated. And it is said that Prithvinarayan Sah, even stopping his military campaign against the Kathmandu Valley, concentrated all of his forces in that war with the Chobishi And as a result of that, the Chobishi states were defeated. Though it was the joint army of the four Chobishi states, uh, casting on the war of time. So this is the second time that the Chobishi states tried to create some kind of obstacle in the military campaign of then the third time, you know, after Prasimunarayan Saha conquered Mokwanpur, the Chobishi to Mokwanpur and also the defeat of Burgin Khan. Once again, the Chobishi states wanted to make an invasion of Gorkha. But this time also, the Gorkhali army defeated them under the leadership of Surpatav Saha. That was the brother of the is the third time. Then again, after the conquest of Kirtipur, once again, the Chobishi tried to create obstacle in the military campaign of uh, Prithinansa, but this time was okay. So, you know, uh, after the conquest of Nuaport, from the time of the conquest of Nuaport to the time of the conquest of Kirtipur, four different attempts were made by the Chobishi states to create trouble in the military campaign of Prishnansa. But it was the tactfulness of Prishnansa that all the time he defeated the Chobishi states. And you know, <coughs> when there was a war, when there was a battle between Prishnansa and the Chobishi states, the Gorkhali king concentrated all of his attention in his battle against the Jewish states. Even stopping his military champion to Valley And that's why, you know, one foreign writer, he was studying the history of Nepal, then he asked me, very innocently, well, Krishnansa started his military campaign in 1742. And he could conquer the Valley Kingdoms only in 1769. 
It took full 27 years. How is it possible? Just to conquer these very small three kingdoms. Then I explain, these are the others. See, the Gorkhali king had to fight against the Bengali army, the British army, isn't it? And the Chobishi itself were also creating troubles then and after. Every time, four or five times. That's why it took full 27 years to conquer the uh, very kingdom of Krishna. So in this way, the troubles which were evident from the Chobishi state were also over. And the final stage came at, actually in 1768. And that story, all of you know, so I don't have to repeat them again, that during the time of Indra Jatra, in the Indra Jatra festival, Prasunayar Jisa attacked, made an attack on Kantipur. And it is said that the Gorkhali forces made an attack on Kipitipur. The first thing is that the attack was made at the night, at the night time, at the midnight, or one or two hours after midnight, purely at the midnight. And the second thing is that the attack was made on such a day when the entire population of Kathmandu, entire population of Kantipur, were involved in the great festival of India. That's the second thing. Then the third thing is that Kantipur was attacked by Krishna and Saha from three corners of the city, not from one place. And that's why, you know, though it took 27 years for Krishna and Saha to make an attack on Kantipur, the conquest of Kantipur was very easy. Kandipur was conquered actually without any battle. Without any battle, Kandipur was conquered and King Jayaprakas Malla. Now he did not venture to resist the Gorkhaliya. It is true that some of his followers, some of his army made the counter attack on Krishna uh, uh, Saha, but there was no major battle. There was only a minor battle, and that battle lasted only for a few hours, only for two or three hours, not more than that. And King Jayaprakash Malla, instead of resisting the Gorkhali attack, he fled away to Lalitpur. He fled away to Lalitpur with his followers, and Kantipur came under the control of the Finansa without him. And here it is said, you know, that when Krishnansa attacked and uh, captured uh, this Kantipur, <coughs> the chariot festival of Kumari was going on. And the Kumari put her tikka on Krishnansa. It is generally said in the Bamsa. <coughs> but <coughs> The foreign writers or the persons who were present there, <coughs> and they have written that on that it was under force, it was under compulsion. That that means the Kumari was compelled to give Tika to the new king. It is a <coughs> anyway. The conquest of Kantipur was without a battle, and he also got the recognition of the new king of Kantipur <coughs> through the hands of Kumari. So in September, by the last week of September, and if you want to know the exact date, it is 25 September. 25th September <coughs> of 1768, Kantipur came under the control of Now after uh, Kantipur came under his control <coughs> and after he knew that King Jayaprakash Malla of Kantipur had fled away to Lalitpur, then he sent a messenger 
to Lalitpur, asking them to surrender the fortress to Because you know, when Kantipur was conquered, and the big area of Tipur, which was under Lalitpur was also conquered, so it was very difficult for Lalitpur to resist against Krishnansa. And that's why Krishnansa sent a messenger to Lalitpur demanding the surrender of them. And then the six Pradhans, they were willing to surrender because they did not see anything, any uh, thing left to resist the Gorhalki. And that's why the six Pradhans were, were in a mood to surrender, but they had one uh, what to say, one demand only. And the demand is that the life and property of these plans, these six ministers and the other people should be protected. That's the only demand they made. And Krishna Amisa promised to fulfill that demand. Krishna Amisa assured that the life and property of the six plans would be secured will be protected. So under this occurrence, now within two weeks, that is exactly on 7th October 1768, Lalitpur also made a surrender. And here again, when Lalitpur made a surrender, then King Zetrakas Malla and King Tej Narsing Malla of Lalitpur they fled out of the country. Now there was no other way, isn't it? The Kantipur king fled away to Dalitpur, but when Dalitpur also voluntarily surrendered before the Gorkhali king, the two kings of Kantipur and Dalitpur jointly fled away to Pakhtapur. So Dalitpur also came under the control of the Jansa. But here also, you know, Prishnan Sai is criticized on one side. And the point is that he had given full assurance to the six Pradhans, six ministers, of the safety of their property and life. But Prasunan Sa did not uh, uh, true to his word. He did not remain true to his word. Now he put all the six ministers, not all the six, five ministers, he put, he actually he ordered the execution of all the six ministers. But out of that, one could escape. That's the main thing, isn't it? And uh, uh, all the five ministers were killed. And the Bhamsavadi even says that not only with the ministers, their family were also killed. And one minister along with his family could escape. <coughs> and, the, and the generation of, or the successors of that minister it is still there in the One family still claims that we are the descendants of